Right, this is part two, uh, just carrying straight on. We're, we've just finished uh, number 38. Uh, so we've put windows in, the constraint, that kind of thing. Uh, if you click the 3D house at the top, this gives us a 3D view. That's the garage. Obviously the walls are too high, that's fine, we're going to change that next. Um, so you can hold down your scroll wheel and pan, or hold down shift in your scroll wheel and orbit. That kind of thing, so there you go, that's the door we put in. I've put the garage door in the wrong way around. Um, I'll just show you from the inside. These lines should be on the outside of the door. Now usually, it should work, it sometimes doesn't. If I select that and press space, that should flip it. Right, it hasn't done, because it's trying to embarrass me and it's worked. Uh, I'm just going to level 0, click that, just click its flip icon, or press space in that. Back in the 3D house, there you go. Um, that's how you flip between whether block works on the inside or outside in a wall. You click it and press space. Um, either way. Um, we're going to set the heights of the the walls now. and In the same way that you can constrain things together, you can constrain walls to certain levels, which is the absolute perfect way of doing it. So switch to any elevation. I'm going to choose east. So double click your east. If you haven't got this project browser, by the way, go to view user interface tick project browser on and also if you haven't got the properties panel just right click anywhere and tick properties on you can move these around wherever you want i should have told you that in part one really um we're going to change this 4000 to 2500 now one thing is when you fire away from something in revit it tends to default to select or to highlight the biggest item we need to select that text but it's not really doing it for us so if you zoom in a lot, and when it goes blue, we can left click it, left click it again, change 4000 to 2500, just press enter, that's now drop down. Another thing to, in future, I've got the uh, level marker highlighted, just click that um, purple mark, and it'll let you, uh, I misclicked it then, it'll let you drag stuff out, right, just get, spend a moment doing some housekeeping. Just drag this. It wants to be such that your writing doesn't interfere with the drawing. Usually these are locked. I should have, uh, when I click that, I should have locked it to this other level here. So zoom in. When it goes blue, click it. Just drag its grip um, and drag it until it, it lines up with the other one there. That's it. Now in future, it, now they're lined up, they tend to move together. Right. You'll probably have to do that later on in all your elevations. It's one frustration, really, in uh, Revit. Maybe in future versions it'll auto-detect where items are and put them outside for us, but who knows. Um, so we've done level uh, level 1, 2500. In, in any view, by the way, you can't orbit or anything in elevations. They're strictly side-on. In, in levels, plans, views, you can't orbit or anything. It's strictly from above. That's actually helpful, really. In a 3D view, you, we could have done this in level 0, but if you just hover over a wall, press tab, and then left click so that all the walls are selected, we're going to tell it that the top constraint, i.e. the top of the wall, is going to finish at level 1. So I'll click that. Um, I'll click it a bit better than I did. Let's have a look. I'll click level 1. Right, why am I getting an error doing that? Never had that before. Let me try it in a plan. Click that, select, click level one, and OK. I'll hover that, tab, select. I'm throwing everything at this now to try and second guess why it's doing that. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll start Revit again. So, who knows, ghosts in the machine. But I'm gonna <laughs> I'll restart Revit, open this drawing, and I'll bet you it works without a problem purely because it wants to trip me up for a laugh and it's worked. <laughs> 